we now start uh, the third part of uh, our course in which I will cover uh, mostly applications of piezoelectric materials, but we'll also talk about uh, uh, piezoelectricity, very, very briefly, piezoelectricity in uh, uh, biological uh, materials, biological tissues, some issues with uh, ceramics uh, uh, and uh, so on. So let's go with uh, uh, with uh, biological uh, uh, piezoelectricity in biological tissues and some issues that may happen with uh, ceramics. Again, both of them rather briefly. So uh, most of the biological issues are in fact uh, piezoelectric. Uh, your uh, nails, hair, eyes are all piezoelectric. Uh, it is not clear at all whether this piezoelectricity uh, has uh, any physiological role. No one has ever showed uh, that it does. So it may just be a, a coincidence uh, the structure uh, is uh, polar and therefore piezoelectric, uh, but that may not uh, be uh, used by, by, by the organisms. Uh, so uh, uh, where does piezoelectricity in biological uh, tissues uh, come from? Well, it comes from the, uh, in part, from the fact that some amino acids are polar, not all of them, uh, 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 some of them are, uh, for example, glycine. Uh, there are alpha and beta uh, forms. Uh, alpha form uh, given here is not uh, uh, polar uh, or piezoelectric, while uh, beta form uh, is and it can be polar either on extension or on shear. Most of the uh, biological uh, effects, uh, the biological tissues are uh, polar on uh, shear coefficient. For example, if you take a hair uh, and strand of hair and you twist it, uh, it will be piezoelectric. Nylon also is piezoelectric on shear, cellulose and so on. Uh, whether this can be used uh, for anything is uh, uh, questionable. Uh, it would be interesting, for example, if we can uh, make uh, crystalline amino acids uh, uh, have a decent piezoelectric coefficient as uh, uh, some people have shown uh, that it is possible actually build uh, 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 sensors out of them. And then this would be a natural materials to use in a human, in a human body for detection of pressure and so on. Uh, uh, there would be no issues of toxicity. So this is an interesting area of uh, research, uh, definitely. And it has been going on uh, for a while. Uh, there is a, a, a famous statement of uh, uh, Matthias. Uh, he was a professor at that time at uh, Massachusetts, I think, Institute of Technology. And uh, he also worked in Bell Labs. Uh, and he once said, you may say anything you like, but we all, we all are made up of ferroelectrics. Uh, so he found out uh, this uh, polar structure and uh, said that with electrical field, you would electric field, you would be able to reorient it. Uh, this was half jokingly, half uh, half serious. Again, he, he thought uh, that, for example, memory uh, that our organism has for different things could be built in this uh, polarity. And I think this is questionable, but it's interesting. Uh, if you are interested to, to learn a little bit about this, besides uh, uh, this paper, uh, here, which is very, very new. Uh, I suggest reading this uh, relatively old paper by Lemonov on piezoelectric and pyroelectric properties of protein amino acids. Uh, it's, it's interesting, it's interesting reading. This here should be quotation mark. Uh, so uh, you have these uh, amino acids and uh, they are, uh, uh, parts of the proteins, protein uh, build uh, uh, 
uh, cartilage, ligaments, tendons, bone, teeth, uh, cornea, uh, and so on. And uh, uh, you will uh, uh, you will have relatively ordered structure. So if some of the elements that appear here are uh, polar, then you may imagine that on stretching or uh, more likely on twisting, uh, you would actually have pro, uh, uh, you would you could actually produce some charges. Uh, so uh, in, wherever you have these polypeptides, you could have uh, uh, you could have a piezoelectric uh, response. Uh, uh, one. Uh, issue is can biological functions be controlled by external piezoelectric effect? So can we introduce piezoelectricity in a body to, uh, to control some functions? And uh, uh, this has been tried uh, for a quite long time now with uh, bones. So why bones? Uh, well, uh, the bones are made of hydroxyapatite and then there are also some organic materials uh, there and around. Now, hydroxyapatite itself uh, 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 has been um, investigated for uh, uh, piezoelectric or uh, pyroelectric uh, effects. And uh, I, I don't think there is still uh, uh, a final verdict on this, whether hydroxyapatite, this uh, solid uh, bone structure, mineral uh, structure of the bones, of the bones is uh, piezoelectric or not. Uh, but of course, there is organic material around and that uh, that could be. Now, why, why would this be interesting for bones? Well, uh, if bone is injured, uh, uh, the bone will self-heal. Uh, that is what is called osteogenesis. Uh, and uh, so the bone grows around the crack and, uh, and will, will eventually heal. Uh, people have tried to do experiments uh, in the past in which they showed that application of electrical currents uh, uh, can heal. Uh, can help uh, healing bones faster. And uh, uh, the reason for this is it's nothing magic. There is really uh, 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 much sense in that. Uh, in, in the bone, there is a lot of mineral uh, which can move. There is a calcium, uh, there is hydroxyl ions and so on. They are all charged. And if you apply electrical field, they will move, okay? Uh, uh, they will move by, by diffusion, but can also move the, with assistance uh, uh, when, if assisted with electric fields. Uh, for example, one way to, to heal a, a badly broken bone is to put a glass material in the hole, uh, glass which is made of phosphates and ca uh, calcium and uh, so on, uh, the parts that make uh, bone, bone, bone tissue uh, in any case. And after some times, because of all these uh, um, basic or acidic or whatever structure of the uh, human uh, uh, human tissues, this glass will be dissolved, will diffuse around and will build a bone structure. Uh, so uh, if you if you apply electric fields, uh, people have uh, shown that uh, this can go faster. Now you can uh, uh, you can you can imagine that if you put a, instead of putting some electrodes in a, in a body, uh, uh, which is inconvenient, you can just put some piezoelectric material there, and then as we walk, uh, we apply pressure on the bones and uh, the charges that are produced could maybe uh, help healing. Uh, uh, this movement charge transport, ionic transport. Uh, another thing that has been proposed in the literature is that uh, electricity actually helps waking up the genes which are responsible for triggering other processes which help in heating. So that, that's an interesting uh, topic. I, I don't want to go too much about that, but here is an experiment that has been done. Uh, uh, I think it was in China in which they uh, introduced uh, 
uh, a teeth, a tooth uh, uh, into a jaw of a dog, and that tooth was made of a composite between hydroxy uh, apatite and uh, barium titanate. Barium titanate is piezoelectric. Now, barium titanate is not quite uh, uh, biologically friendly material, okay, but. Uh, 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 you can try it. And what they found out uh, that this interface between the bone and the tissue uh, was uh, uh, improving uh, better for a teeth that had piezoelectricity uh, in them than those that uh, uh, didn't have the tissue was growing faster and incorporating that tooth uh, uh, faster uh, uh, than than if it is not piezoelectric. I don't know if this has ever been reported, uh, but uh, there is a research done in this sense. And uh, I should mention here uh, that uh, uh, in all these discussions about piezoelectricity of, uh, of bones, uh, 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 there has been also proposed that it is not really a piezoelectric effect, but flexoelectric effect. Uh, now, flexoelectricity is closely related to piezoelectricity, although they are distinct effects. Basically, what it says is that if you take a solid body, insulating solid body, and you flex it, any body, so there is no limitations with the symmetry, and you flex it, so you 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 make something like this, and here you have now uh, the lattice. So the atoms will be closely, more close to each other here than they are uh, on the top. And since uh, ions are charged, the distribution of charges here and here will be different. And you will get actually some polarization across this uh, across this uh, material. And uh, uh, on the other hand, if you have inhomogeneous electric field in the material, uh, it would locally polarize material differently in different parts of the material, and then you would have bending of the material. So there is a direct and converse flexoelectric effect. Now, why don't we talk much about that? Well, the flexoelectric effect is uh, closely related to the strain gradient. And that strain gradient uh, in a normal solid bodies cannot be very large. So flexoelectric effect is actually relatively small, orders of magnitude smaller than piezoelectric effect. However, now with uh, 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 with all this technology where we can make very thin films, uh, the strains can be huge just from the top to the bottom of the film, strains can be huge. And therefore, uh, on a nanoscale, uh, flexoelectric can be, or microscale flexoelectric effect can be very large. So uh, people have proposed uh, that uh, uh, healing of the bones uh, is actually triggered by flexoelectric effect. So if you have a crack in a bone, uh, then uh, 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 around, so if this is a body and then you have a crack, uh, around this crack, you will have an inhomogeneous uh, a stress uh, and therefore you will have uh, some electric fields uh, around the crack in any material, so also in bones. And that electric field can act on a bone tissue uh, uh, in, a, in a regeneration of the bone cells. There is one uh, a moment where uh, some cells have to die in order to generate uh, the next cells. Uh, and in that process, uh, this electric field has been calculated to be large enough uh, to, to kill cells and to help generating uh, the new ones. Uh, so I'm sorry about this.
Okay, so that's electricity by bending. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, uh, so there are, there are different ways in which uh, electromechanical effects can be uh, involved uh, in uh, uh, in physiological functions. For example, in eye, uh, maybe piezoelectric effect is used for focusing. No one knows, uh, or at least I don't know that uh, if uh, anyone uh, if anyone knows this. Uh, so I will uh, I will stop here uh, with the biological uh, effects. Uh, uh, piezoelectricity in biological tissues. Uh, there is much 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 more to say about this than I have. Uh, but uh, we don't have time. And if you are interested, starting with these papers that I have given you, uh, will give you enough literature uh, to follow on.